So one of the causes of uh, overheating in a Pojo engine or generally on a ICE engine is uh, faulty water pump or what you also known as coolant pump. You know, but then uh, the water pump can fail uh, in about two or three ways and then still cause overheating. But just a one that could, there is a particular failure that may not really cause uh, immediate overheating. It may take a while before uh, the engine will start overheating. That's such as a leakage. If it's leaking water, most times you find out that it may not really cause overheating immediately. It will take a while. You know, most times it has to wait on the, the coolant level in the system drops before the overheating starts. Uh, but the one that is more uh, common uh, is uh, when the impeller part of uh, the water pump fails. Uh, by impeller, I'm talking about the that uh, turbine part of the water pump. Uh, you know, you know that uh, side of the water pump that is facing uh, that uh, what the coolant passes through as uh, the water pump spins. So we call it uh, call it blade shaft. No, not the shaft itself. You know, uh, just know it as the impeller. That's the name. You know, so you could call it to buy whichever one you want to call. So that's part of side of it that spins or pulls or pushes the as the water pump is rotating, that pushes uh, the water or the coolant. That's the one that once it fails, it could fail in various ways. For example, it may have like about seven uh, blades here, there. Uh, if one of them breaks, yeah, it will reduce the, the spinning or the cooling of the engine or, you know, reduce the pressure. So, or at speed with which we pushes the, the coolant or circulate. Let's just say not push, circulate uh, the coolant. Um, another way is um, uh, it, the, that uh, impeller can actually disengage from the shaft. So even when the impeller, uh, all those, uh, 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 what's it called, the blades on the, on the impeller, it, they, they might still be intact. Let's assume there are five, and the, all the five blades are still there. It may pull out from the shaft, and it's the, of course it will overheat because nothing else uh, is, is circulating the fluid at that time in the engine and uh, between the engine and the radiator. Or sometimes, especially like the metal. Uh, the was the water pump with the metal to buy or impeller. Uh, depending on if the user uh, has not been changing his coolant or using only water, it might rust the cooling system. It usually rust the cooling system, in fact, which will rust that uh, impeller and then uh, most times they will just disintegrate. You know, it will the rust. The rust will make them fall into pieces, and it won't be there. Won't be anything there anymore. It will just be flat like a disc. You know, so it won't be able to do anything, or it just become a plate. Nothing there anymore. No edge. Um, there are some could be plastic. Um, the plastic can crack and uh, same. So it all depends. Like I said, these are the impeller failure can be is usually the common uh, cause of overheating uh, when uh, is water pump is the cause of the overheating. So now, so this video that you are looking at, which I'm yet to play, uh, was sent to me by a client that was having issue with his uh, engine, overheating issue. So I explained to him what to do, you know, how to uh, isolate or diagnose this cooling system uh, overheating issue uh, by himself. So he did all that and then when he came to the um, how to test if the water pump is the cause, since he said there was no leakage uh, from that part of the engine where the water pump is mounted. So I assume the issue is not leakage. Uh, even if the water pump is bad, it's not leaking. 
So uh, now we need to test the the turbine uh, in the pillar part of the water pump. And to do that, um, so I had a method that I figured out by myself years ago on how to do this test. So I uh, wish I've been explaining to clients or using it to test people's uh, uh, car when I'm diagnosing people's uh, cooling system issue, overheating to be specific. I apply it and it works for me. So I explained it to him to do it on the phone. I explained everything. So he said, okay, that I was going to do a video on that so that um, he will send the video and I need to confirm uh, the result. That is that's exactly what I explained to him. Uh, that if he gets this particular result, it means the water pump is good. If he gets the other part, it means the water pump is bad. So, so that's the video I'm going to play. However, um, he, it wasn't everything. He covered it as the way I want, but then there are some things that uh, uh, the person did not show, which I want to talk, you know, mention briefly so that while you're watching it, you understand fully. But he did everything exactly the way I did, and the test he did was successful, showing that the, his water pump was still good. So after when you watch this video and you understand what I mean, so this video will tell you that if you do this type of test and uh, it came out exactly the way it showed on the video, then there's nothing wrong with your water pump. The, the cause of the overheating is something else. Unless even if it's water pump, probably could be a leakage on the pump. But then you can easily tell because you see um, sign of coolant or uh, around that uh, water pump area. You know so. Unless if you use water, most times if you use water, water will not show you a uh, leakage, you know, because uh, coolant will discolor wherever it's coming out from. Unless it's flowing, uh, you know, continuously, very uh, big uh, leakage, then you can easily see it as water is dropping off, water or coolant. Okay, so uh, briefly, let me explain how to do the test before I play the video so that uh, you understand as you are watching the video. So, uh, to test the water pump uh, impeller, how good it is, or to know if that is the cause of the overheating issue you are having, uh, specifically with uh, Pojo engines produced around that uh, early 2000 to late 2000, or I'm talking about EW engines, ES engines, TU engines. There are so many of the Pojo engines have used this method to test they are or diagnose their cooling system uh so they work tu engine ew engine es engines i believe uh, i can't remember if i have done it on um tier what's it called i think i've done it on thp engine as well and got similar results uh, uh you know the test proves uh, they all work the same way i can't remember for sure maybe one of these days i'll do it or do a video on that so that you guys will confirm uh say it yourself so but it was for me uh, there could be other ways other people are doing using to know if the water pump impeller is the cause or not but this is the method i figured out by myself and uh, it's working for me it worked for people i explained it to and they tried and it worked for them so what you do is First, the engine has to be cold to actually get uh, a good result from this test. Uh, so, what you do is you, the, your coolant reservoir cover or coolant reservoir cap, you leave it closed. Don't remove it. Don't open it. Don't even uh, turn it open a little. Just leave it tight, closed in uh, a normal way. Of course, I, you have, uh, before you do that, like I said, engine needs to be cold. I need to have enough uh, coolant or water in that reservoir. Uh, so leave the, leave it closed. Then leave the engine off. Um, then you go to, what's it called? You go to, now you are looking at this picture now. This is a video I'm yet to play, but so as you are looking at it now, you see two horses. Most of these, all these engines I mentioned, uh, if I basically from the late nineties or there about the date, most of these project cars you see things like this that goes from the engine two horses 
from the engine to uh, into the vehicle via the heater matrix, uh, or what they call firewall. So, so one of them will always have a small cap. Uh, that's where you you bleed the cooling system that goes to the heater matrix into the vehicle. If you don't know what a heater matrix, just know the one that takes coolant into the vehicle inside the vehicle. So you see a small cap like this. You are going to see the watch, see it on the video when this person uh, opens and remove the cap. So well, what you do is you remove, leave the uh, reservoir cover closed with the code. Then remove this cap, that cap. When you remove it, water will not flow out. Make sure every other breathing point or cooling system is intact. As in don't remove anything. Don't remove other breathing points or valves or any part of the cooling system. Disconnect it. No. Leave everything as it's supposed to be when you start and use your engine. But like I said, do it when it's cool. So remove this cap. When you do, nothing will come out from there. Well, worst case scenario, you could just see a small drop of water, palm, palm, and that is it. It's not going to be flowing. No, it's not going to flow. It may just be dropping a little, maybe. Sometimes the the position of this um, hose might be facing the other side. So in that case, yeah, you could see water maybe dropping, but not like continuous, constantly flowing. It may just be dropping small, small, you know. So when you remove it, then keep the, co the, the cover, that cover, or that cap on a safe place so I don't lose it. Um, um, then this, is, this test has to be done by two persons. Unless your own engine has a total position sensor, or that's a set of position sensor, or maybe it has a, a manual throttle body. In the engine bay or has auto position sensor in the engine bay that what i mean is you can accelerate the engine from the uh, engine bay if your car has that uh system then you don't need a second person but if your car has doesn't have that that it means the only way for you to accelerate the engine is from the throttle pedal that is the only way then it has to be two persons so what you need to do then is Ask another somebody else to start the car and stay inside the car. Stay right behind the steering wheel. Doesn't need to come out. Stay there. You cannot be instructing the person what to do. So um, remember, you remove this car before you start the car. So when the person start the car, now observe. You realize that you will, there won't be much difference with when the engine was off and when you started the car with this cap off. There won't be much difference. Even if there you just be just that small pump, 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 you know. Depending on how the engine, uh, this source is uh, uh, connected. If it's facing the other side, if the cap is facing downward a little, yeah, in that case, you may be dropping, but not just constantly or you force. You just be dropping, pump, but um, if it's up, facing up like you are seeing on this video, it won't drop, you know. So what you do is uh, start the vehicle, we let the person start it, why you observe? Because you are the one doing this test, you understand what you want to see. So the person may not understand, so don't be the one to go to the, to, to inside the car to start and uh, um, be taking instruction. You have to be the one, even if it's a mechanic that you are doing, let that person be the one in the car, starting and uh, doing that, whatever you tell him or her. So when the engine starts, uh, observe just few seconds. You see, nothing will be coming out from that hole that is now open. That you remove the car. Uh, tell the person to accelerate the car, just maybe a little. It depends on the uh, temperature of the oil. You may not, okay, this time don't bother so much about your engine is cold, uh, so you need to wait for it to warm up. No need for that. So um, tell the person just to accelerate a little. You know, maybe after like a minute or two. Of idle, tell the person accelerate the engine maybe to two to three thousand RPM. When the person does, let it just do something like Whoa! as it's accelerate to three thousand, take off your leg, right? Um, it's not like you accelerate stay there, no, just Whoa! take off your leg from the accelerator pedal. When it does that, you see 
you look, you see that there will be a small attempt, as if water wants or cooler wants to come out from that hole, uh, where the cap was that you removed. Uh, but even if it comes out, like I said, depending on how the hose is mounted, whether upside down or par by the side, uh, facing the other horizontal or vertical, whichever one. So it, it, it's not going to flow like vroom, vroom no. But then, after that first one acceleration, you cannot tell the person to press the accelerator down to at least up to 5,000 RPM. Now, I know some might say, ah, engine is still cold. It's going to damage your engine. Keep all those, your crappy, this thing. You are running a test. If you are actually using the recommended engine oil, one wave, one high wave at cold engine, is not, it's not what's going to kill your engine. You know, but you need to do this so that you know exactly where the problem is coming from. So in that case, tell the person, put the RPM uh, as hard as, but not up to rev limit, as what I mean, to rev zone, no. Push it as high as maybe to four to 5,000 RPM, you know. So push, let the person do, whoa, take his leg up. Now, what you now observe is this. When you are when you now accelerate that hard, now, depending on the engine model, what will happen is immediately you do that hard acceleration with this cap off and every other part of the cooling system closed as normal. There will be a burst of water or coolant out of that hole. We flow, then after a while it's stop. So it will happen in either of this way. That time you are pressing the accelerator, you are pushing it hard, it will flow out or after the acceleration has reached its peak and stopped, as the engine is decelerating, that's you do mm, as it's not doing, mm, it's returning as the engine is returning back to RPM. Then you will see that surge of uh, fluid, water, or coolant out of that hole with force. It will blow maybe like about two seconds constantly with that force, then it will stop. So it can happen when you press the throttle down, as you press it down before it gets to that 5,000 RPM. Remember, at low RPM, if you press it to 1,000 or 2,000, it may not happen. But if you push it close to that 5,000, boom, before it reaches the 5,000, it will flow out with four. Or it may not even happen at all until when the engine, is now, the engine sound is now returning back to idle, then that force, it will see it will come out. So, like I said, it depends on your engine model, but one of these must happen. So if this happens, then your thermostat, your water pump is okay. In other words, your water pump impeller is okay. It's spinning your water very well, your cooler very well. It's not the cause of the overheating. Even if the water pump is leaking, but at least it's flowing, it's, it's circulating your fluid very well in the engine. And uh, from the engine to the uh, therm uh, radiator, unless your thermostat is bad. Uh, so, but water pump is not that way, you know already, it's, uh, uh, that's not your problem. You know. So, remember uh, the cap, the radiator reservoir, no, the coolant reservoir. Uh, you know, by me, this, I mean, where you pour coolant uh, or water. That will now circulate, enter the engine, the radiator. That's what I mean by coolant reservoir, expansion tank, whatever name you want to give it. So the cover must be there. So another test you want to do, but that one is no longer there. It's not to me, it's not really that necessary. It's, if you now want to confirm, uh, even with, with your engine off or engine running, if you find out that. When you stop accelerating, the water or coolant stop coming out from this hole, this dark uh, hole uh, you are looking at on the screen. But if, if the engine is running, I will now go and remove the cap on the expansion tank, that cover on the expansion tank. Even with that accelerator, you see water will come, will immediately start flowing constantly or coolant without even any input on the accelerator pedal. Even with the engine off, it will just be flowing. So you see why I said you must uh, cover that place because if you don't cover it, it won't really allow you to do this test. Because if you flow it constantly, then you will know whether your water pump is good or not. So, but when you close it, then 
you will be able to allow you to put pressure to see if that works because as that acceleration you are doing is to you know increasing the pressure or the spinning of the turbine we should not you know if there's any hole or opening it will push out the coolant from there so if the coolant water pump impeller is bad of course not, nothing is going to come out you know because there is no circulation so no matter how you accelerate the car uh, the water it is not circulating so it will not go in, uh, in from anywhere it will come out from that hole so i hope you now understand so even without watching this video by now you should be able to know how to do this test so i'm going to play it now I want to check whether the water pump is working. So I'm removing the head, the nipple. The water is coming out. Start the car. to check what 
so um you have all seen or uh, watched the video so this uh, like i said was done by a client on his uh Pojo 407 v6 p2 es9 a uh so um so if you have um a Pojo 407 v6 this is exactly how it's going to be here or uh, any Pojo vehicle with this uh engine uh, you're going to have this same um, experience when you do this test um, so you can do it yourself to learn, to see, confirm how your water pump is working and all that. It's just that if you are doing the test, uh, uh, expect that after doing this, you are going to bleed the entire system because once you remove this and do this test, air is going to be trapped in because air will be coming, we have to go in from this uh, cap that was removed from the uh, heater matrix source. So you have to do the entire, bleed the entire system. Uh, so remember you have to do it. It's better to be done with the engine code If you do it when the engine is already the system because the system is already pressurized and the engine is hot already Even when your engine is hot, immediately you remove that car is going to blow off You know the same way to behave if your engine is overheating or very hot you gotta remove the uh, uh, Coolant reservoir cover. You know what is going to happen? You know, so it, that's why it's better done when the engine is cold, so I can touch it if you need to. Uh, you know, when you're removing the cap, you won't force your hand out and you lose that cap, which may be hard for you to find. Or when you want to cover it, you won't have, find it difficult. To, so it needs the engine to be cold to do this test. Uh, so I don't think I. This is my own method. I don't know if any other person probably figured it out uh, exactly this method, but this is what I figured out all by myself. Not nobody taught me this. I've been doing this for years. I've been teaching people uh, that come to me or you know or watch me do that on their vehicle. So uh, maybe other people have their own method of testing water pump impeller to know how good it, it is. Like I said, most of this uh, impeller is what usually fails on the water pump. Even when they leak, they tend to still hold the pressure until you know it start dropping. The coolant le leaks halfway, or you know, usual cause is the faulty impeller, or broken impeller, or the rusty, you know, whichever. So um, the leakage can still cause overheating, leaking. Leaky water pump can still over cost over it, like I said, but then that one is more obvious. You don't even need to do this there because you will see uh, water dropping out from that side of the water pump, or the you see a sign coolant will always leave a, 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 a color wherever it's coming out from. So you see it from that side, even if it's in tummy chamber, it will see come out from under the engine from around the crankshaft pulley. So you will see it around that side, you see the mark of coolant. So my advice is, if your engine is overheating, um, the easiest way to fire, if even if it's not overheating, but you notice your coolant is always shorting, you know, the, it's shorting every now and then, you are topping up all the time, Put, use coolant. Even if you are the type that hates coolant, you need it in this time. Use a coolant, buy a coolant, even if it's one liter, put it in, for uh, to uh, uh, diagnose and identify where the leak is coming from, it will help you. What you see in the, by the next day is whatever that leak is happening, or, or leak or coolant or fluid is leaking from the cooling system. You will see the mark. It's going to show you that color of the coolant around that side, or kind of reddish color. You know, it will just you will help you to know if uh, the leakage is from the uh, water pump or elsewhere. So that's why I said it's easier to identify a leaky water pump without touching anything. But this method is if we, uh, the problem is not caused by leakage, but your engine is overheating. So this is the easiest way to do it without removing or, uh, your water pump to physically inspect, you know. So I hope this video helps.